In 2015, I set out with my wife on a journey that would change our lives forever. Walking for six months through mountains, desert, and forest on a continuous footpath from Mexico to Canada. This is our story. I'm Andrew. This is Kristen. We met in high school, and after college, we got married. She had never been backpacking before, but after our first hike together, it quickly became the thing we did for vacation. After a couple of years, we just got hungry for something more. We wanted a challenge. I will never forget the moment I asked Kristen if she'd want to hike the PCT. And she just said, okay. So here we are, 2015. We've read blogs, gear reviews, guidebooks. We've sold off everything that couldn't fit in a little storage unit. And we have bought food for six months. The way it works, or the way it can work, is you buy most of your food and you put it all in flat rate USPS boxes. Then you mail those boxes to yourself at designated post offices. So every week or so when you get off the trail and resupply, you grab your box and you're good for the next stretch. My mom, there's my mom, would be periodically sending these boxes out as we inched our way up to Canada. Planning out this much food was insane. Just to give you an idea, we bought over 100 packets of tuna. We bought over 300 protein bars. To this day, I'm not really crazy about protein bars or tuna packets because I ate them every single day. Peanut butter though, peanut butter holds up. It's good stuff. It's April 11th. We are training in Grapevine. This is the closest thing I think we can get to the BCT around Dallas. Time, eight hours. Distance, 20 miles. How do you feel? Nervous? Mm hmm Cool. <laughs> cool. Yeah, a little nervous. These are the Germans that I met. Hello. That's Michael. Yes. Me, Mike, how do you say? <laughs> Micah. And then Andy. We are Germans, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to go to sleep, I guess. We have one before, too. Okay. Okay. Tomorrow we start. Today is April 22nd. We flew to San Diego and got picked up by Frodo, the trail angel. So we're at their house right now. They fed us dinner and we've been repacking and unpacking our packs and comparing them to other people. Um, and we had dinner. And right now, everyone is again repacking their packs. But it's been cool because it's been nice to like share anxieties and worries and um, talk about gear and it's been good. I'm already enjoying the community of the woods. Did you fall asleep? <laughs> you fell asleep? <laughs> That's the Mexico border. First Snickers of Mini. It's very tasty. You decided to stop no. at 15 miles. Yeah. It's the end of day one. It was a good day. 
I roll my ankle like two miles in, um, but just walk through it. It is <clears throat> April 24th, day two, <laughs> mile 15. There's Kristen. And we're off to kick off. We are in the desert, 15 miles from the border. This is great weather for the desert. Kristen rolled her ankle yesterday. I'm a little concerned about that. But when we go to kickoff here in about five miles, we're gonna see uh, <clears throat> if we can find some type of brace. My right knee really hurts. But I think that's just part of doing this. Kristen, with the K? Yes. Kickoff is a yearly event held by PCT enthusiasts from everywhere, all with the same goal helping hikers at the start of their journey. We thought we'd just check it out for a minute and keep going, but this was actually really helpful. We met some of the people who paved the way in our research. People like Half Mile, who sold all the printout maps of the entire trail. Meadow Ed, who we read about in the book Wild. Gut Hook, who makes a GPS app for the trail. And Yogi, who wrote the main book we used in all our research for the hike. If you haven't noticed, Hikers really like nicknames. We even had our gear looked at and managed to send home some stuff that we thought we needed, but probably didn't. There were tons of presentations and talks, but the most helpful topic was on logistics. And on that note, I realize you're probably still wondering, how the heck do you even do this? Let me explain. The way most people do this trail, you start at the Mexico border around springtime. That way, it's not dangerously hot in the desert yet, and hopefully enough time has passed by the time you get to the Sierras, where river crossings and mountain passes are safe. After that, it's kind of a race to Canada, because at some point, you're gonna hit snow, new snow, in Washington. The thing that made 2015 unique was the drought. So this meant that snow melt wasn't really a big issue, however, Water was scarce in the desert, so we really had to pay close attention to where our water sources were and if they were even flowing or not. April 26, day four, mile 20. We just started, it's 7 a.m. and it is wonderful weather. Not too many clouds in the sky, so yeah, hopefully we'll, hopefully we'll make some good miles today. So it is April 26th, day four. Not even an hour ago, we were underneath that bridge. I really find it rewarding to look back and see how far we've come in just an hour. <laughs> and it was just like, all oh, this hill and uphill, which isn't even that bad. As we are hiking, there's one thing from kickoff that really stuck with me. So, you know, we were at kickoff, we had only hiked 20 miles out of the 2600, and we were still a bit nervous and felt like we didn't know what we were doing. When we were talking with Yogi, she probably picked up on some of that because she told us something that would stick with me for the rest of the trail. She said, if you're so worried about making it all the way to Canada, just buy a plane ticket. This is coming from the person who laid out all the logistics for us in a book. Up to that point, we had done everything we could to prepare for this hike. But the fact is, there's just no guarantee you can finish. We were just going to have to take each challenge as it comes. I know it's a cliche, but focus on the journey, and not the destination. And I'm grateful she told me that. Yes, our goal was to get to Canada, but that wasn't the real goal. The goal was to be out there for as long as we could. April 28th, day six, mile like 68, I think. Uh, we are camped out at the water source. I ate a dinner that was very, very salty. Uh, too much salt. We're about to get our early 
we start? It is 5.09 right now. I'm about to put 7.5 liters into my backpack. I have 7.5 liters of water. Kristen has seven liters. That should last us two days to the next water source. So I'm gonna try not to narrate this whole thing, but I do wanna jump in and provide context when I think it's necessary. And what we're about to experience, it's hard for a camera to do justice. Imagine you're waking up at 4.30 every morning because the heat of the day is so hot you have to sit in the shade. You're carrying seven liters of water. Your feet are sore from yesterday. By mid-morning, you're already exhausted and you have the rest of the day to go. Then you come to a patch of shade and there's people there, people who you've never met. And they ask, what kind of sandwich would you like? And there's no expectation of anything in return. They know the journey that you're on and they just want to help. I'm paying it forward for next year, so I'm hoping anyway, so do my through hike next year. This kind of thing happens enough where it's been given a name by other hikers. It's called trail magic. And these people are called trail angels. And in my opinion, those are accurate names. Very, very hot out there. But it's nice and cool in here with the breeze. Okay, we have just made a new discovery. Andy's peppermint, this spoonful of peanut butter. It, it tastes like, like a mint flavored Reese's peanut butter cup. 5.07 a.m. Here's the third gate cache. The only reliable water cache in Southern California. 11.23, heat of the day. How do your feet feel? On fire. Two miles today. So remember how I told you about mailing yourself food along the way? Well, it's pretty common that people overestimate how much food they're going to be eating or what type of food they're going to get sick of eating every single day. You never want to carry more weight than you need, and it feels really wasteful just throwing away perfectly good food, so you leave it behind for whoever needs it. Maybe someone showing up late at night who only has rice and beans in their food bag and they can't pick up their box until tomorrow morning. Those people would be us. And this applies to more than just food. If you don't want it and you think someone else might, put it in a hiker box. We just got a shower. We're gonna get a ride from the shower. One back and one in the front. We've been I'm gonna really take a photo bad. of us all. Selfie? Yeah! Case in point! <laughs> oh no, I forgot about all this <laughs> Chocolate coffee oatmeal. laundry machine didn't wash all of our clothes very well, so we're washing them and hanging them up to dry. Hobo life. Hike your trash. May 2nd. I think it's day 10. We just took a zero at Warner Springs, rested our feet, and now it's like 5.30 and we're back on the trail. Uh, trying to get 10 by 10, that's 10 miles by 10 o'clock. So we're just gonna keep hiking until the sun rises high enough to get hot.
How's it going? Guten Tag. Every time you have your camera in your hand, we are just relaxing. Yeah. <laughs> Day 11, May 3rd, and we are out here at mile 29, I guess, somewhere around there, 130. Um, and here's Andrew eating again. How are you doing today? These are great bars. We stayed at uh, Mike's house, the Trail Angel, and had like two lunches and two dinners and pancakes. It was awesome. So, we gotta keep going though today. Bye. Mama. <laughs> well, it's about 3 o'clock. This whole area was shaded about 5 hours ago, but now it's just a tiny area of shade, so. I think we're going to move on. Every day, there's a handful of moments where you just stop and look around and you're in wonder. But then there's the in-between time where you're just walking and you're not listening to anything. You're just letting thoughts flow through your mind. It reminds me of when I was a kid. I'd mow the yard, or when I would take a road trip but not listen to anything for a while. It was just a time to think. And now, out here, with no responsibilities, except to continue hiking this trail that you've committed to, whatever you've been keeping yourself distracted from in normal life, now you've got all the time in the world to think about it. And you have to sit with it. You start to think about who you are, what you stand for. You start to wonder, what do we really have that we can take with us? There's really nothing. Everything we see around us, even our own bodies, are eventually reclaimed by the earth. And when you've got all day to think about that, it changes you. I'm getting hailed on in the desert. Loving it. Loving it. I found a big melted cluster of chocolate pretzels in the hiker box from Paradise Cafe. Wonderful, wonderful snack. We have our tent pitched on the side of the road. Everywhere else said off limits and no trespassing. Describe yesterday. Learned a lot of things. Uh, we did the detour with Shadowhawk and it hailed in the desert, which was a phenomenon. A phenomenon? Phenomenon? It was just really cool. And uh, at first it wasn't hurting us and it was just a little bit, but then, like, by the time we got up this hill, it got heavier. So we hid underneath a tree and we were hearing thunder but we weren't seeing any lightning and I learned an important lesson your pack cover always goes on the outside of your pack mine was below my sleeping bag so I had to take everything out and then put my everything back in so that was unfun uh, then it stopped and became sunny and warm and we all dried out and then we kept climbing and climbing to like 6,000 something and it was really windy and cold and then it was like six and we went all the way down the ridge and it was the steepest incline we've
we've done yet like to go down in the shortest amount of time and then we kept walking and we couldn't find anywhere to camp so that's how I ended up on the side of the road um and we did 22 miles yesterday right yeah uh, at least yeah my feet were hurting I think I hear shuttle hook Oops. So we're gonna go down into the cloud. What is today? Oh, today. Today is Cinco de Mayo. What does that make today? Day 13? Mile 160 something. And uh, Shadowhawk has been hiking with us. So that's been lots of fun. So there's the trail, and we went like down over to the highway, over there I think. And then we went all the way back in a race star arrow sign. But we're close now. Hitchhiking is something I never thought I would do, but there I was, sticking my thumb out, and what do you know, the first car that saw us gave us a ride. As human beings, we don't give each other enough credit. People, in general, really are nice, including this guy. Now, the place he dropped us off is now one of my favorite hotels of all time. And it's not because of some breathtaking view or an infinity pool or jacuzzi tub. The Idlewild Inn is one of my favorite hotels because that's the first time I ever realized how much I took a sink, a toilet, a shower, and a bed for granted, I had never experienced so much joy from letting my body fall onto a mattress with fresh sheets. We just had a shower. We feel incredible. Um, good. We're with Big Cheese and uh, an endless, and we're we're going to La Casita. What was even more magical than that were the friends we had made in just two weeks. It felt like we had known these people for months, and these weren't just fellow hikers at this point. These were friends now. People you go to dinner with or go buy your favorite ice cream from the store. People you want to spend time around. My favorite ice cream of all time. It's an ice cream sandwich. I really like, I really like something with like substance. M&M's is good. Oh, my favorite ice cream is actually frozen yogurt. Friendlies, do you guys have Friendlies in Texas? No. I bet you'll be able to guess what they want to call Andrew. Peanut butter? <laughs> yes. He keeps on talking about creating a YouTube channel <laughs> where he tries different things with peanut butter. <laughs> and he talked about it for like, I think he talked about it for like 20 minutes. 
at our last zero. Yeah, I did. And so people keep calling him peanut butter. <laughs> Kristen's ankle was still feeling a little sore, so we decided to take a zero, which in trail lingo is an off day because you're putting in zero miles. This is a rare video rental store, and I found Star Wars. I think what made Idlewild perfect for me was this. One of my favorite childhood movies with popcorn in the middle of the PCT. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. And the next day, we were back to hiking. trying to find a better one because the camp spot we have is very exposed and it is extremely windy here. We tried setting up our tent but it was like a kite and even with us sitting in in it it was uh, picking up off the ground so we had a choice to make. We decided to go with what we knew was was there so we backtracked a mile and a half uphill in winds and I think I honestly think like the wind danger is like 60 to 70s even more like it's it's tough it was knocking me down it's morning time now um eating breakfast right now and uh let me just show you what's out there It's snowing. PCT. That morning, we woke up shivering, and by noon, we were back in the desert heat. We walked underneath Interstate 10 to a place called Ziggy and the Bears. Every day on this trail was a further step out of the life we had always known, and a further step in to this new normal called through hiking, where the simple pleasures of pizza and shelter brought overwhelming joy, where the generosity of trail angels and fellow hikers never ended and where you were guaranteed to have throbbing feet as long as you kept walking. Tell me how the day was. It sucked. It sucked? Yeah. What sucked about today? My knee was hurting me and my ankle. First time uh, night hiking. Well, let's just camp right here. Oh, there's a banana! Whoa, bananas! Oh, no Look at this. I've been thinking of a banana all day. 
It's Here. the perfect Take one. one. Oh. Yay! You want one? We'll take a shirt. Why not? We managed to get a hitch right away into Big Bear. As determined as we both were to stick to our schedule, Kristen's ankle was not getting any better. We were concerned it could get worse. So our new plan was to find a place here to stay where she could keep her foot elevated for as long as it takes to heal. But first things first, food. We're going to try the seven pound burrito challenge. Burrito challenge? Yep. Okay, awesome, great. Let's do it. Neither of us could finish this burrito. How so did you do it? Been here, How you did you? You should have seen this dude Brett. He ate it like clean plate. Like I would have used this dish to start food with. Ten minutes. I mine. I mean, I would. I did pretty good, but it was a more pedestrian fifteen to twenty minutes. But I'm telling you, I I was like second fiddle last night at the burrito eating contest. Wow. That's awesome. I know. Why'd they, up, why'd they upgrade you? Y'all just look that, like, broke down and worthless? Maybe we look so exhausted that they felt sorry for us. Uh, that was nice of them to feel so, so sorry for you. The next morning, we left our hotel room, eager to get back on trail. But as Kristen started walking, she felt pain again. So we did what we had to do. We booked two more nights. And that was pretty tough. First, it was concerning that she was feeling pain. But on top of that, all our friends had already gotten back on trail and were making progress. Every day we stayed in Big Bear increased the odds of us never catching up to them. It was hard not to wonder if this would be the end of our hike. If Kristen's ankle didn't heal, we weren't sure what we were gonna do. And that's when I read a quote taped to a paper towel dispenser. It said, live life as if everything is rigged in your favor. And it just hit me. None of this was in my control. So why should I worry about it? Why don't I go get some takeout? We can watch movies on my phone. And we can just enjoy this time together. Because all we have is this moment. And it's our decision to enjoy it. Looking back at this five years later, those two days stuck in a hotel room had some of the best memories on the whole trail. And I think it shaped our mentality moving forward to truly embrace whatever moments come our way. Okay, we're finally leaving the hotel. Yay! I'm really excited. I'm tired of sitting down. Forever. How's your foot feel? Really good. If you took four days off from hiking, you would think that getting back on the trail would be really easy. That's not the case. The soles of my feet were throbbing pretty much most of the day yesterday. This is one of the biggest rivers we've been to in the desert. Kind of cold this morning. We just got to 300 miles. Yay! I've been looking forward to this all day. We got some beans and rice. And we've got Pinzi's taco seasoning and a packet of mayo. That's what I thought they were. Ooh! That feels nice. The world it moves in ways we can scarcely understand. Yet we walk. Hello. Hello. Welcome, I'm Coppertone. Hi, I hiked the Pacific Crest Trail in 2006, so I'm just paying back a little bit and doing some trail angling. I did this last year, I made over a thousand root beer floats between uh, here, which is Highway 173 in California, and Stevens Pass in Washington. Yesterday, we saw someone riding a horse in a pocket of the saddle was this little puppy. So unexpected. Not much left of me. Something's assembled. Nonetheless. On either side of the line, we circle our own selves. Yeah, we 
search through the fog. So our friend Derek just got here. He actually surprised me while I was pooping. As he should be. <laughs> I got ibuprofen, Snickers Oh, B12 in case you guys are running out of energy. Snickers Snickers. More. And I use that a lot. Please. Tomorrow. Bag. And going straight in the food bag. All right. <laughs> moon pies. It really is. They're moon pies. <laughs> ah, but they're empty. Oh. Ah. On the scale, seven out of ten. That quartz right there has got a seven out of ten on the Mohs hardness scale. You can scrape it, and it's gonna work. I'm gonna drink some of my lovely high C. Is it good? It's like Thanksgiving leftovers. Mmm. Those are the best. Making a review on leftover McDonald's. First fries, it kind of tastes like cardboard. But that's all French fries. I forgot that. The cheeseburger, not bad. It still kind of tastes the same. So. Alright, you guys, take care. Mm -hmm. and, Thank uh, you for coming. Absolutely. I'll stay updated. You guys are really cool. That big hug right there. Yeah. You guys are awesome. You really inspired me. Yay. See you guys. <clears throat> we just left our campsite. We're headed uphill pretty much all day today. Look at our view today, above the clouds. Wrightwood was a pretty quick stop. We got our food, I got some new trekking poles, and we were back on the trail. Most of the hikers we saw were actually staying back in town, all except Andrew, a different Andrew. He had been hiking with us for a while now. I haven't really talked about trail names, but the whole thing I wasn't really into. I liked my name, and I didn't feel a need to get some kind of trail name. However, given the circumstances, it seemed kind of practical for us to figure out nicknames so that we weren't confusing Andrew for Andrew. So the three of us started thinking about what to call each other. Now, Kristen had recently discovered that she could download podcasts and listen to them in airplane mode. I know a lot of you are thinking, how do you not know that? I don't know. It was 2015. Just give us a break. Anyway, she was really excited about that, talking about all the podcasts she was listening to. And so Andrew suggested that as a trail name. Uh, podcast. Podcast. A podcast. Yeah. I like it. I like that. A podcast. That's a good one. Back in Big Bear, Andrew and I were trading some food from each other's resupply boxes. And the first thing he did was turn the package around and look at the weight and the calories to see if it was worth carrying, which is a very reasonable thing to do. But as we kept hiking with him, we realized he was doing that with all of his calories, meticulously. So we felt like Count might be a good nickname. As for me, I went with Ewok. You know, those little fluffy guys from Star Wars, because they're awesome. And Kristen was telling me that's my spirit animal, which is probably true. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Oh, cookies. Oh, oh cookies. man. Mama's working, right? Would you like a homemade cookie? I think we should save these for when we're on the trail. Like or we might just eat them like off today. I guess it was like three. We ran into Sweet Moon Pie and Coyote's parents, and they had like fruit and cookies. It's cool, like parents just come and do that on the side of the trail. And we got to uh, Agua Dulce, which is a small town at mile 455. And that's when Andrew started just feeling bad. But we didn't really think anything of it, so we kept going. And we met um, Iris from the Netherlands, and she wanted to hike with us. And then we also met um, Morning Song, and he hiked out with us as well. Well, I mean, in campsites, you know, like kind of larger campsites, but not like out here. Usually I just, I don't know, I haven't really... Been at the same pace as somebody else. As as I haven't like, camped alone yet. You haven't? <laughs> I haven't camped with anybody yet. Two days ago, I had potato salad. Someone gave all the hikers. We started hiking with Morning Song, who's a chef. He said that's what that's what did it. I ate a lot of things, but he said it was probably the potato salad. I just feel like crap. <sighs> don't don't eat free potato salad. Just don't do it. Uh, it's day 35, and Andrew's over there. He's climbing up the hill. We've gained about 1,500 feet already. Uh, he's not feeling too good today. So it's kind of a slow morning, but it's beautiful. So beautiful. We made it to the road by dusk, just in time to get a hitch to the legendary Casa de Luna. I was still not feeling good, so we were planning on taking a zero, and Iris enjoyed our company, so she decided to take a zero too and stick with us, which was a big deal. You know, it's one thing to make friends on this trail, but it's another thing to adjust your hiking schedule to fit someone else's. And that really meant a lot to us. Casa de Luna was great. Tons of coolers to wash your trail clothes in, Hawaiian shirts to wear while your trail clothes dry, pancakes in the morning, taco salads at night, and my favorite thing of all here, rock painting. That's where I spent most of the zero. I continue to be surprised by all the forms of generosity on this trail. It is humbling in so many ways to stay at someone's house who doesn't expect anything in return. And I will forever be grateful for that. It is time to go. How do you get water out from there? Hello? There's water. Just all the way down there. There's enough water where we could scoop it out, but it would take forever. It's 
What do each of you have? Um, I have probably half a liter total. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense to me. It says a hundred gallons of cold water in tank under roof. There what? has to be a guzzler around here somewhere. What is a guzzler? No idea. If that's a guzzler, that's it. No. That's a huge tank with water. But right before it says red rock water tank. So there's that's another true. source over here somewhere. 5.33 a.m. Wow. That is so beautiful. Wow. So here's the, the water. Down there. And lift that lid. And there's the water. Uh, scary, but well, someone left has a hole in it. So you just... And then it drips. The previous day, I just happened to have cell service. When our friend Joni called and said she just happened to be in the area visiting family. This is another one of those moments that there was no way to expect. We were out here in the middle of nowhere on this forever mile long hike, having left behind our life in Dallas, something that felt light years away now. The truth is we really missed our friends back home and all of a sudden, here was one of our closest friends. With pizza and ice cream, and her sister and brother-in-law and their brand new baby. They took us to the softest grass I had ever laid in, and I relished this moment that I knew would have to end. I knew that if we wanted to have a chance at completing a continuous footpath to Canada, we would have to keep going. As hard as it was, we said our goodbyes and we got back on the trail. What time did we set up camp? 10 p.m. Yeah. And what time did we wake up this morning? 3. 3 a.m. <laughs> and now it's 4 a.m. 
we decided to take a zero in Tehachapi. We also decided on renting a car in Tehachapi. The closest REI was only an hour and a half away. And I say only because since we were used to walking all day every day, our perspective of time had shifted to where an hour and a half really felt like nothing. Traveling on a highway when you're used to walking at two miles an hour, it's a very strange sensation. Everything feels like you're going really, really fast. But on top of that, on the way back from REI, we recognized some of the landscape that we had walked through a week ago. It took us a week to travel by foot what took us probably, at this point in the drive, about an hour. A week to an hour. You know that feeling you have walking around after you've been rollerblading or jumping on a trampoline for a while? This was kind of like that, but with your brain and how it perceives time and distance. Yeah, it's right down here. So right here, we are passing over the PCT. 100 feet below us, you can see, see the trail. Ahead. Right over there, that's the trail. You see hikers. And we are passing over the trail now. And that's where we ended up, I've over there it. on the other side of the, on the highway. It's pretty awesome. We drove over the PCT. Nice shoes for the past 500 miles or so. These are my new shoes. The real problem and my feet was right in this area. It's just totally flat right there. I mean, there's just nothing left there. No more cushion. Uh, I think I ran probably at least 100 miles in these, just on cement, uh, you know, whenever I would run back at home just to try them out. So I probably have six or 700 miles on these. Um, I would replace them at about five or 600. Sweet. Can I give you some money for gas? No. Are you sure? Because yeah, you don't... came all the way from wherever. Don't worry about it. Well, thank you. Sure, have a good time. Thank you. Good thank you so you. much. It's good meeting you. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Hope you guys make it. I'll try. <laughs> This next stretch would be the heaviest weight we would carry. <laughs> Seven liters of water, about 14 pounds, to make it 36 miles to the next water source, and four days of food. I did not know what our packs weighed, and I did not want to know. I just wanted to get to that water source. Oh my God. So, uh... Last night we encountered a bull and uh, Andrew decided that he needs to wear his cape today, which just happens to be red. Yep, I'm hiking with the coolest person on the PCT. I'm not sure why I decided to buy American flag tights in Tehachapi, but I do remember being really excited about finding them. I guess the logic was, why not wear the flag of the country you're walking across? I don't know. Now that I think about it, I don't know why I got french fry pattern gaiters. And I'm not sure why I saw the piece of a sleeping bag liner in the hiker box as a cape I could wear. I will say the hiking umbrella was an awesome find and very useful in the desert. But everything else was just pure goofiness. I mean, maybe there was like a superhero theme going on? I don't know. Watching this footage five years later, I really had to pause and ask myself, why? After giving it some thought, I realized this was the 2015 me sending a very loud message to the future me to not take himself so seriously. Life is short, have fun, be goofy. Today, zebra cakes, lifesaver gummies, spam singles, two Hawaiian punch, two tortillas, trail mix, one perfect bar, Snickers bar, and a crunchy Nature Valley bar.
I think the overall feeling is we're all excited to get to Kennedy Meadows because we can say that we uh, are done with the desert and we probably passed the hardest part of the trip, I think. Is any of it full? That's all empty. Water really was scarce in the desert. We never relied on water caches for this exact reason. They might be used up by the time you get to them. And even though there were thunderstorms in the desert, in no way could they be relied upon as a dependable water source. We are waiting out a storm for a little bit and we're about to gain elevation. Should we set up a tent? <laughs> In case it rains. <laughs> the only way to make the mileage you need to and stay hydrated is to follow the water report. And sometimes that would lead you down a dirt road to a tiny puddle hidden in a patch of grass surrounded by cow patties. Marked by a tent stake by the last hiker who probably spent hours searching for it. At that puddle, we spent two hours tediously filtering six liters of water using a bandana, then our filtration system, then Aquamira drops. This is what I'm hoping is trail magic. I see cardboard boxes, maybe with water. <laughs> oh, you're going for the mustard. I'm gonna try it. Patches, we'll see you in Kennedy Meadows. We'll see you in Kennedy Meadows. That's right. Iris now has a trail name. Patches. She was carrying enough food to get to Kennedy Meadows, but we weren't. We met Rita, who offered to put us up for the night and then take us in town the next day to get our resupply. As if hospitality of trail angels wasn't enough, our boxes were becoming their own form of trail magic. Treats and letters from loved ones back home encouraged us to move forward through the desert heat. After showering and cleaning our clothes, Rita took us back to the trail. Next stop, Kennedy Meadows, gateway to the Sierras. Bye. All right. We were all the way down there by the road. Now we're up here. June 9th, about 8.40 p.m. We've been walking all day. Kristen, how many miles have we done today? 28. 28.7, 28.7. I think that's a record. It's patches. We caught up to Patches. We've been seeing your shoe prints. I saw a bear. You saw a bear? Yes. No see. way. Yeah, yeah, you took a picture of it? Yeah. Guess how many miles we did yesterday? 29. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We had to get it in before we the series. We walked is. all day from 4.30. We had like a two hour break for lunch. No way. Until 9.30? Yeah. <laughs> I went down to the water source uh, near the Joshua Tree Creek and uh, Color Wheels, she, she came up running like, oh, there's a bear, there's a bear! And she was having lunch there. <laughs> so, so she came up and um, I was like, I want to see that bear because it didn't sound too scary because she was just taking a movie of it and everything and then she ran up and with the food still half eaten in her hands. <laughs> so I went down because I needed water and the bear was just, just sleeping under the tree. Not scary at all. So I was like keeping an eye on it, filling the bottles. <laughs> oh my god. And then before I left, I whistled at it and then it looked up and I could take that picture. <laughs> you whistled at it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I wanted to have a good picture. <laughs> 700 miles. 
Kennedy Meadows, the finish line to Southern California. A place where indefinite zeros are welcome, where cell service and Wi-Fi are non-existent, where friends reunite after getting split up through the desert, and where a cacophony of cheers can often be heard as another hiker makes their way up the road for the first time. This was the best resupply we had gotten yet, a reward for making it this far. We spent the afternoon honing our bear canister packing skills and enjoyed a night of celebration and sharing stories of our recent time in the desert. The next day, we had to hitch into town to have Kristen's eye looked at. We met the nicest doctor who gave us some really great news. All she needed was prescription eye drops to treat the infection. It was nothing serious or super contagious, just a week of wearing glasses instead of contacts. We headed back, and the next day, we were ready to get on trail. Right when Patches and I both got recruited to be in a choreographed Hiker Made music video. Because why not? Remember that thing I said about embracing Goofy? Well, this is 100% that. It's midnight. Time to climb my Whitney. You ready? I'll have a breakfast and then I'm ready. Throughout my life, I've had experiences that serve as a foothold in my journey to understand this world. Hiking to the top of Mount Whitney was one of them. Now, summiting this peak is nothing compared to so many peaks around the world. It's something people day hike. Nonetheless, here I was in the middle of the night, walking up a narrow ice covered trail on the edge of a seemingly bottomless cliff. As I shined my headlamp over the edge, I could only see the nearby rocks as they faded into darkness. All I could do while being short of breath was dig in my foot securely and take the next step, focusing all of my thought and energy on not falling, because falling was not an option. Eventually, the sky turned a deep blue and finally, we reached what felt like the top of the world. A place that, were I to follow my primal instincts, I would never go. Oh man, wow. There's nothing to find at the top of a mountain, except the feeling that we are very small and this world is very big. It spins on its axis while hurtling through space, and everything we do in our lives revolves around that spinning. The sun passing through the sky from one side of the earth to the other. I might someday face much more challenging mountain peaks and witness much more extravagant sunrises, but nothing will take the place of this sunrise at the top of this mountain. Way too cold out here, so we're gonna go in 
excited. at the top of the PCT. Pretty cool. This is by far the most beautiful day we've spent on the trail. I can't stop taking pictures. It's like, I mean, pictures don't even do it justice. Or video or anything. It's just, wow. I mean, everything since Forester Pass has been just, I really can't even put words to it. Everything is green and pretty. I don't know where Kristen and Patches are. They're like probably way ahead by now. Because I've been taking video and pictures, but it's just it's so beautiful. I wish we could just take a zero here. Yesterday was the coolest stuff we've seen on the whole trail so far. Kings Canyon is really something else. had the most subway I've ever had at once. Um, now I'm going over across the street. This really interesting little tiny post office. It's kind of cute. 
Good mall. about over here. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. No stains and it's gray. Man. This place is so interesting. Those are mountains that we climbed earlier. I'm going to the coffee deli place to get Kristen some coffee and eggs, because we never have eggs anymore. I kind of miss the mountains though. of the peak we're at the top and look at the beautiful view here we're talking about crumpets and tea with our English friends here Look at that. 800. basically ran to our camp today because if you did anything less than running or really really fast walking then uh, you'd get eaten alive by mosquitoes so right now I have a bunch of stuff covering my skin like my rain jacket my zip off pants I zipped them back on I tucked them into my gaiters and then I put on my rain kilt uh, I'm, I'm pretty much covered. I'd like to model my wardrobe. My, my skirt, so when I, when I bend down or sit over, they won't bite my butt. I've got my rain jacket. I'm gonna do these Velcros so they don't, they don't go up my sleeve. I got my pants tucked in, and I am ready for mosquito land. Guys, like this week has been hard for me. Well, how has it been hard? Just like physically hard. At this time of day, if you stop for more than 10 seconds, you'll get a swarm of at least 30 mosquitoes trying to suck your blood. Um, yeah, we got one right now. We were now in the heart of the Sierras. And though this place felt to us like a wonderland, it was by no means easy. Scenic mountain views demanded countless steep switchbacks that I had no energy to film. Our bodies were sore every night and the swarms of mosquitoes in every valley 
were some of the most aggressive I had ever encountered. I would have filmed this section so much more, but hiking the trail itself was at this point truly exhausting. But it was all worth it. This land was so beautiful and so humbling. Now, I'd like to take a moment to talk about the person this section of trail is named after. His name was John Muir. I didn't know much about him back in 2015, but since then I've read about his work and I'm deeply moved by what I've read. This was a man who saw the value in preserving parts of the earth to keep this land we were now walking through pristine and protected from exploitation. If it weren't for his writings about the lands he traveled through, we might not have a Pacific Crest Trail today. Though not all of his writings have aged well, I find his general perspective on life to be inspiring. It's part of the reason I'm sharing the story of our hike. I hope whoever is watching this can see that there is real value in leaving land untouched by industry and development. When reading his book, My First Summer in the Sierras, he of course described the grand views of the Sierras I was so familiar with. But then he described simple things like ant bites in amazement. And this is what he had to say about poison oak. Yes, poison oak. He said, quote, like most other things not apparently useful to man, it has few friends. And the blind question, why was it made, goes on and on with never a guess that first of all, it might have been made for itself. So much of John Muir's writings challenge even the 21st century perspectives as human organisms on this earth, so self-absorbed that we forget the wonder that can be found in a simple plant or insect, whether or not it directly contributes to our well-being. Muir saw this land as a spiritual sanctuary to be revered and often criticized many popular views of his time. In his plea to keep the Hetch Hetchy Valley from being dammed and flooded, he referred to his fellow Europeans as temple destroyers, who, instead of lifting their eyes to the god of the mountains, lift them to the almighty dollar. Though he was not able to save Hetch Hetchy, over his lifetime, Muir's writings convinced the U.S. government to protect Yosemite, Sequoia, the Grand Canyon, and Mount Rainier as national parks that we can visit today. We're with Big Cheese and his fiance. First campfire on the trail. Yeah. What is this? It's like Wisconsin gold. Wisconsin gold? Also known as the cheese curd. The cheese curd. Okay. They were squeaky yesterday oh, before shower. they were chilled. Wow, thank you. Oh, it's not, probably not a very big deal to anybody, but... No, it's a big deal. I mean, y'all are from Wisconsin. It's like... Your gold. If you guys brought some prime rib, I'd be like, this is Texas prime rib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, this is the real stuff. By this point, we were in Yosemite National Park, and Patches had planned to meet up with a friend to hike Half Dome. I won't get into the boring details and logistics, except to say that we had to keep making progress. It was a hard decision to make, but we knew that Patches would likely catch up to us eventually. So that night, we shared stories around the campfire, and the next morning, we said our goodbyes. <laughs> At least for now. Oh, we look fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Be safe tomorrow. That's the difference in a brand new Thermarest and one that's been through about a thousand miles. Chicken breast with rib meat and mashed potatoes. Whoa, Whoa we got three. Macaroni and cheese. Whoa, <laughs> We're gonna get some rain today. We've got about four miles to our campsite. 
which should take us at least an hour and a half. Probably two hours because there's uphill. Uh, we might try and find a spot a little bit earlier than four miles. It thundered. And it, like the valley looked like it had a lot of rain coming towards us. And uh, now there's no thunder and no rain. This is what freeze-dried macaroni and cheese looks like before it's hydrated. break. The mosquitoes are really bad and the sun is just out so we're really really hot. <sighs> okay so tonight we have the chicken teriyaki and we had the interesting mashed potatoes and chicken breast. I think I still like beef noodle the best. It's nice to have these, because like instead we were gonna have like ramen noodle, and then I think the other meal we were supposed to have was rice with tuna and cheese powder. I don't know what I was thinking about that, but these are really nice. Today's a pretty big day. We're crossing a thousand miles. We're also leaving Yosemite. And uh, the mosquitoes are hell, <laughs> which is why I probably look really stupid. We're gonna get really close to uh, North Canyon Meadows and go in tomorrow. Tomorrow's 4th of July. So, yep, hating the mosquitoes. Very wet wood here. I'm gonna try and start this. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. That's pretty crazy. We just saw a bear. A big bear. So there were times like this when I could not pull out my camera quick enough to film the bear just down the trail from us, which was a great thing. I'm glad that I was not able to film a bear because that means it was running away. But then there were times when I felt like putting my camera away altogether and it was mainly around people. It wasn't all the time, but sometimes I just felt like if I don't put my camera away right now, I'm not going to fully engage with this person. And other times I could totally film a whole bunch and still be very present and in the moment. Anyway, I don't have a lot of footage of this guy. His name is Magnet. We'd been hiking on and off with him for the past few days and had had some really great conversation. He actually makes his own backpacking gear, which is pretty awesome. We hitched into North Kennedy Meadows together and met some more really awesome people. I really don't get it. I filmed getting a hitch. I filmed opening our resupply and these fireworks, but I only have these pictures of Tequila Jack, Richard, and Penny. I'm glad I put away my camera and gave myself a break from filming everything because this was the rest and encouragement that we needed for this next unexpected challenge, rain. Waiting for the rain to go by. Because the storms here are very small.
It's strange to think that we were challenged by the lack of water, and now we were challenged by the abundance of it. It's guaranteed to rain every afternoon. Luckily, we were having lunch at the same time that it's raining. We made it to the parking lot. Does anybody want one of these? Thank you. Like I mean, here? are you? I'm giving it away. Really? <laughs> got it? This just happened. Fall apart. Yeah, yeah, I got it. This just happened. It just happened. Well, thank you so much. We took a zero in South Lake Tahoe, and this was definitely the highlight. I could smell this Chinese food from across the street, and I instantly knew I had to eat what they were serving. The fried rice, orange chicken, and broccoli beef brought me back to childhood. I can't really express to you the joy food brings when you're through hiking. All I can say is, if you're in South Lake Tahoe, Jade Garden is where it's at. Jade Garden, five stars. Cheap and good and filling and wonderful. Walking to Sierra City. So, I used to have pretty feet. And now they're fat. Like, big and swollen. This is what a one pound hamburger looks like. Here it goes. I can't, I might need a fork. I don't think I've ever eaten one pound of beef that quickly. It's taken a few hours, but I feel better. This is a sad reality of the PCT. It's uh, filled with drugs. There's an aspect to this hike that I haven't brought up. It was one of the biggest challenges on the trail. And it's kind of hard to talk about. We missed our church back home. We missed deep, personal, and vulnerable conversation. This community on the trail was great, but it was different. Don't get me wrong. I'll be the first to tell you. The thru-hiking culture is one of extreme inclusivity and generosity. Every hiker we met would literally give you the shirt off their back if you needed it. But there was also quite a bit of focus on drugs and alcohol. And that's just not what we were used to back home, aside from maybe a margarita here and there. Try hitching away from this craziness. Just craziness. Not 
our thing. Now, to each their own, I am not here to make a claim on what's right or wrong. I only bring this up because when you're the only two people who don't partake in what everyone else is doing, and that thing is also the main topic of interest at times, it's a very isolating experience. There were times we would just keep hiking when we didn't feel like it, just so we could have some peace and quiet to ourselves. We also got looks from people sometimes, people who were not through hikers, that we were a bunch of raggedy party animals, and we weren't. We were just trying to hike this trail. And on top of all this, we were busting our butts on this section of trail that was supposed to be way easier than the Sierras, and it wasn't. It just wasn't. I don't mean to complain, it's just this was a very challenging time for us on the trail, and we felt really discouraged. At the same time, it's hard to talk about this feeling of isolation because we always felt included. I mean, nobody ever made fun of us, and we were always invited to the circle. These were good people who just lived their lives differently than us. And up to that point in my life, I had never been challenged to think about it in that way. To look past these differences that before I couldn't. Okay, here's the pizza joint. Thank you there's so a, much. There's a few staples that keep us going out here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Hey. Look, I know people in town. So, 24, drive by three is eight. That's eight a day. It's not a lot, but it's something. I think you should get peanut butter. Okay, I agree with the peanut butter is a thing. Just purely out of a nutrition be, standpoint. There's gotta, well, there's gotta be like a, a uh, peanut butter in a hiker box, is what I'm thinking. Kristen didn't feel comfortable wearing her pack, so it's going in the grocery cart. We're getting some hand sanitizer. Oh, here we go. It's always in different places. Last time it was at the bottom. Cheese, cheese Oreos? No. What's that? Icing, Oreos, tortillas. Cheese, cheese, cheese tortillas. tortillas, icing, Oreos. Cheese, 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 cheese. We've got cheese, tortillas, something that our friend told us about. Icing. Dark chocolate fudge. Little Debbie's are, ooh, oatmeal cream pies or cosmic brownies. Mm. We're Twinkies. No, definitely uh, donut sticks. Uh, decisions, decisions. Swiss rolls. We haven't done those before. Let's do some Swiss rolls. Yep, Swiss rolls. Haven't had these before, but all the little Debbie snacks are awesome, so this should be good. The plan was to hike seven miles to Bernie Falls State Park. But plans change. We knew about the wild bird cache just a mile up the trail, but as it turns out, this was not just a water cache. This was a party cache, our kind of party. There was junk food, music, dancing, soda, darts, all the good stuff.
cut to our water source and there's bats everywhere. Pretty cool. I like bats. I haven't had one of these since like third grade. These things, they stick together, which is huge. Like nutty bars don't do that. Zebra cakes don't do that. I thought these would probably fail, but they didn't. The stupid squirrel up there has been dropping bombs on our tent. Luckily, none of them have reached their target. It's very sticky. That's, that's pretty heavy. That would hurt. We've made it to Highway 5, right above us. <sighs> Doesn't that look nice? Week and a half. We're gonna be here in a week and a half. Green Springs in cabins. That's where we're going. So, my backpack has a broken strap and Osprey is going to give me a brand new one. Yeah. It's Shiza, not Shizer. Like this part of the bag is usually where you would put your sleeping bag and then Osprey has it where you can close it shut. But we line our sleeping bags with trash compactor bags to waterproof them. So I never open this. Saint Germain invites you to perform alchemy with him. Alchemy, that's, that's turning stuff to gold, right? I think it is. Um, that's the most interesting one I see here. Apparently there's like this uh, high intelligent spirit village living inside the mountain. The next morning, I went back to the laundromat to finish drying our clothes. I went early so that we could get an early start hiking. It didn't surprise me that someone was sleeping in the laundromat. It was a nice air conditioned building open 24 seven. It made sense. What didn't make sense was two people on the opposite side of the building Attempting to sing along to the national anthem while doing. Well, I don't know what they were doing. I just needed to figure out how to leave without them noticing because I'm pretty sure they didn't know I was there. Did you watch my door, bro? Ah. I was very eager to get back on trail. This is it. Thank you so much. Check mix and cheese. There's an open car over there. You waved. I did wave. Do you want to ride to Edna? <laughs> Absolutely. We've got whole rotisserie chicken, sourdough bread, and a giant snap. Sweet and sour pork from Grayson. I'm exhausted right now. As the crow flies like 25 miles from the orange. No. Whoa. No. Yeah. So 
It's just like right there. Uh, probably. Yeah, you can yeah. probably see it on a good day. Made it to Syed Valley. About to get some showers and do laundry. Today was a really tough day. Um, Kristen's been going faster than me on average. And um, so it's, it's just been kind of tough. Okay, so I feel like it's a good time to look at some stats. 106 days ago, we were at the southern border of California and since then, we had hiked about 1,600 miles and we're now almost in Oregon. We took 14 zeros, half of which were injury or illness related, and our daily average was 18.4 miles a day. 28.7 was still our longest day, that day right before Kennedy Meadows. We went through 22 resupply boxes and we had been through two pairs of shoes and we're now both on our third pair of shoes. Up to this point, there were six days in total where we hiked more than a marathon, and half of those days were in the past week. That's because we were on a deadline. My family had bought plane tickets and were planning on meeting us in Ashland, Oregon, where they rented a cabin. So if we didn't reach Ashland in time, that means when we were done visiting with them, they would be dropping us off back in California. And we were eager to be done with California. We were overdue for a break, a good break and we would be getting one very soon. But first, we had to finish California. <laughs> How's your ice cream? Really good. And look what's in here. Empire Strikes Back. That's what we're watching. Breakfast time. So this place is famous for the pancake challenge. One pound pancake right there. <laughs> What's used to flip it? It's a giant spatula. Hi, welcome to the giant. Thank you. It's like a giant big burrito. Chris, how'd you do it? Horribly. Look at all this pancake. I feel like I did pretty well. You ate your pancake. Actually, it was memorable. Today's been very difficult. We did a really steep climb and it was kind of in the heat of the day. I started to feel really sick. We're putting our stuff in here and we're just gonna walk without backpacks for two and a half miles. Man, we officially walked through California. Do y'all want to dance with us? Look who it is! It's Sid! It's Sid! Uh, trying to get up! Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. This little bitty one. I get half of that, right? No.
catch up with us. We're going hiking in the woods. So today we started at Green Spring. We're gonna go to Callahan's while the rest of my family goes and explores the redwoods. We couldn't really take four zeros, but we're gonna sleep in a bed tonight. Hey! Yeah. How's it going? Nice to see you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi. How are you? How are you? Good. 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 back on the trail? No. Oh, how do you get into that thing? You just Where are get we? Into it. And there they go. I love you. Love you. Love you okay, back to reality. Go. Okay, back to reality. What did I mean by that? Back to reality. Was this not already an escape from reality, kind of? Wasn't reality back home where the culture of workaholism thrived and everyone climbed the never ending ladder to success? We paid off our debts, we saved our money, and we left all that behind us. So why was this now reality? Doing nothing but walking in the woods all day, every day. Well, it's actually kind of simple. We were kind of tired and we were not alone. From the very beginning, it was not unpopular to skip large chunks of trail when you got tired or bored of walking through the woods. But we had a specific goal. I know I've said this a lot, but the continuous footpath from Mexico to Canada. That was a big deal for us. I guess the strive for achievement hadn't totally been left behind after all, but if you were hiking this trail, wouldn't you want to be able to say that you literally walked the whole freaking thing? I mean, if you're gonna do it, just do the whole thing, right? Well, when we got to Crater Lake, our friend Chaney had some unfortunate news. The trail was on fire, literally. The details of the forest fire were not clear, but what we did know was that we would have to hitch 100 miles to go around the fire and continue our hike north. So, no continuous footpath. But, I mean, it was on fire. This specific kind of hitchhiking would not be easy because more northbound hikers were pouring in and were needing to do the same thing that we were doing. We quickly realized we were in the middle of a bottleneck situation where we could be stuck here for days looking for a hitch. So, not sure what we're gonna do yet. Imagine walking around, going up to strangers, asking if you might be able to get a ride in a direction that they're probably not going. But then, Cheney had a brilliant idea. He called a shuttle company who could take yeah. everyone the next morning in a large bus. Maybe. We're really hoping that you can, hoping you can help us out, okay? Okay, great. Thank you. I guarantee that. Yeah, and then yesterday we tried to get out of here. Yeah, we're hiking again. Yeah. Now we're here. <laughs> I've got the car, it's really, okay. So, um, I did call the shuttle company, or the charter company, and he's, he said, if they can find a driver, I'm going to call them back tomorrow morning at 9.15. He said, if they can find a driver, then they think they're going to be able to work something out. The bus situation didn't sound like it would be a guarantee, and it might be a little expensive depending on how many hikers actually went. 
And later that evening, a friend we had just met named Trigger had a friend who was giving her the ride. They had extra room, she invited us along, and so we jumped on the opportunity. If we didn't keep moving north, we would run into some very cold weather in Washington. And we, we so we got cool four people ride. back here. <laughs> We're heading south up until closer. Not out of here, okay? Man, back to the trail. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks. Have a good night. <laughs> This is Andrew relaxing. It's day uh, 120. We're just outside of Shelter Cove in Oregon. Okay. What's up? How's it So right now we're waiting for our packages. I think I see ours. It's that flat rate box. Maybe? Don't know. I really hope our box is in <laughs> Me there. Too. I don't see the big whole shoe name on it. <laughs> oh no. Do you think your box is in there? Uh, it's, it should be here today. How you going? <laughs> 1900 miles. Butterfly in the sky, you bring a tear to my eye. Like when I'm out of chocolate bars and it's too far to town for pie. And the water report didn't say the last stream would be dry. Butterfly, can you fly me to my next resupply? Hell no. I'm hiking on the PCT. Let me tell you what it means to me Getting out of the big city And all the sights that I get to see Now I know what it means to be free Walking 20 miles a day or maybe 30 Only stopping when I need to pee Or when someone offers me some THC I've got 30 more miles to go Before I lay my backpack down I've got 20 more miles to go I hope I don't get turned around I've got 10 more miles to go To get to the next campground I've got 5 more miles to go Or maybe I'll just hitch to town Or maybe I'll just hitch to town Mexico, Mexico. Mexico. going to Canada It's like 2,000 miles? Yeah Long weeks That's impressive 
Welcome PCT hikers. In Oregon, there's a youth camp near mile 2000 of the PCT. This camp had converted one of their cabins into a hiker cabin and provided hikers with free dinner and breakfast and a free shower. They even had a campground just off the property line where we could camp. I'm sure camping off the property was for legal reasons, maybe lack of background checks, I don't know. But to me, it just showed the willingness to serve a stranger with everything in your capacity. In my head, I just kept thinking, they didn't have to do this, but they did. They did because it was an opportunity to serve a stranger. And I was that stranger. The spirit behind that whole place just made you feel like you belong, no matter who you are. I don't know if Big Lake Youth Camp belongs to a certain denomination of Christianity, or if they are even Christian at all. And I don't really care. They opened their doors to us, and on top of that, made us feel welcome when they had every right not to. They were a youth camp. They had no responsibility to take care of us hikers. And what made it so memorable was that no one ever came up to me and asked what my spiritual beliefs were or if I was saved. I don't think I even saw a single Bible verse there. But their hospitality was definitely intentional. I'm not a fan of Christian music. I never have been. But that night, as I walked back to our campground, I could hear off in the distance the sound of worship music. And it was so beautiful. In a way, it represented my whole experience there. There was a spirit to that place, and it invited you in. But it also kept to itself. I don't think it's wrong to share your spiritual beliefs with someone else. But I think there's something to be said about this type of hospitality towards absolute strangers. It's just a very beautiful thing. And when you are that stranger, it's a very humbling experience. We just made it to camp. This will be 29 miles. Wonderful. We haven't done 29 in a while. Can we wait a few minutes? Yeah. We're on an adventure in the rain because we're in Oregon. Can't see it. Been a pretty tough morning. My hands are finally warm enough where I can hold the camera. Earlier, my hands were so numb. We couldn't even tie our shoelaces. That's all right, we're almost there. It wasn't freezing, but it was very cold and raining pretty much all day. Everything was soaked from the day before, and we had another injury on our hands. And the thing about injuries is you've got to get off trail and heal. You cannot continue or it will get worse. Okay, this is the ski day area. Currently, nobody really uses it except through hikers. Look at all this lovely area that you can just dry out your stuff. How do you say it's cold out? Shai Zakai. <laughs> we needed time off trail and there were cheaper bunk rooms available for hikers, but they were all booked. I don't know how often they do this, but we got a really nice upgrade. Let me tell you, Timberline Lodge is a magical place. 
And their breakfast buffet might be the best breakfast buffet I've ever eaten at in my life. But being forced off trail by something you can't control kind of puts a damper on everything. Eventually, we had to move to a cheaper hotel in a town nearby. And as each day went by, we weren't sure if this would be the end of our hike. Actually, we were never sure. Of course, the plan was to finish. But it always felt like we were lucking out every day we were able to keep hiking. I took the bus to Portland to buy some new shoes and to see our friend Boat, who had finished his hike before us. It's hard not to bring this up. I'm currently editing this video in February of 2021. We've been quarantined for months. I'm working from home. We are new parents and trying to be really safe with this COVID stuff. And watching this footage of public transit, well, it makes me really miss being in public like we used to do. What I'm feeling now is actually very similar to what I felt the day I was filming this. The feeling of being stuck, without having any control over the circumstances. I think times like this on the PCT helped prepare me for 2020 and, I guess now, 2021. You've got to stop and count your gratitudes because you just never know when the last day of your hike is going to be. All you can do is take in what's right in front of you and find something to enjoy about it. There's always something to be grateful for. And you never know. There might just be better days ahead. Hey guys, it's Kristen here, and uh, it's like 8.30 in the morning, we're still by Mount Hood, and here's all the mist, and just like dark Harry Potter forest. We're like 35 miles away from Cascade Locks, and that's the border of Washington, and today is Saturday. We were going to try and get there by tomorrow. like at noon, but we sent our box to the post office. So we have to wait until Monday, which stinks. After being off for four days, we really wanted to keep moving, but we'll probably just take our time now. room, the guest room of the house of the friends that we made a couple days ago, and it's pretty surreal. I got on the table, and it was reaching for chairs, and that one is going to lose. Okay, so 
We are at some friend's house. Some friends that we met on the trail because we're waiting for our package in the post office and it's a holiday today so it's not open. And they offered for us to stay at their house and now we're playing Nerf Wars with their kids and it's pretty fun. I don't know if I can fit through there. Okay, so we've taken a break. Many of us have gone to get a pedicure. The ones remaining are playing Minecraft. They're just getting on the verge of being old, but they're still great. Just put them in the back. Don't sit on them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't sit on them? Here, actually. You should put them in We made it back to Cascade Locks. We left our little paradise. Last night we watched the Lorax and ate Chinese food and it was amazing. As if the past 24 hours didn't already feel like a strange, beautiful dream, who else would we cross the bridge into Washington with but our German friends, Micah and Michael. 139 days ago, we started this hike with them at the Mexico border with no intention to finish together. Our permits just happened to be on the same day. But now, 2,100 miles later, we were all crossing the Washington border. So one of us suggested, since we started together, why not finish together? And that's what we decided to do. Hiking through Washington with our friends was this sliver of time in our lives when we were so eager to finish hiking and get back to normal life. I mean, we were now counting down the miles we had left to Canada. And our friends felt that way too. But at the same time, we were not in a rush. Washington was supposed to have some of the most beautiful views of the whole trail, and we didn't want to just fly by them. It was a lot like the days leading up before Christmas, where as a kid, you're so eager for the big day to get here, but you also don't want this wonderful season to end. It's this tug of war with your experience, wanting the days to go by faster, but also wanting them to slow down. What I've learned is to lean into the slowing down of moments by just enjoying them while they're here. Because when they're gone, they're gone. Some Did you just yeah. eat it whole? Yeah, yeah, like an apple. Oh, wow. 2200.
just started snowing. We're hoping that it doesn't snow a lot because we're going up uh, Knife's Edge today, which is supposed to be kind of scary, but that's what people on the internet say, but sometimes people have a low tolerance for heights and things. So I don't know, but either way, it wouldn't make it a very good situation if it was snow everywhere. Hey, take care out there. Whoa. This is insane. This is really insane. Crossing Knife's Edge was one of the scariest moments hiking the PCT. With the strong winds, the freezing snow, and the steep drop-offs on both sides, it didn't feel like there was much room for error. And to be clear, none of this footage is of Knife's Edge. I have no footage of Knife's Edge because I didn't feel safe stopping. I didn't feel safe only using one trekking pole so that I could film. I did not feel safe, period. The footage you're watching now is after Knife's Edge. We stopped here behind these rocks to check our GPS and see if we were at the highest point or if we should stay here and wait out the snow before continuing. Turns out Knife's Edge was behind us, which means it was somewhere way up there. You couldn't even see it from where we were. This just keeps getting more and more incredible. Now that the snow's died down a bit, you can see some of what we've been through back there. This is just, this is incredible and humbling and terrifying all at the same time. This is something else, not expected. Ready to be done with it, ready to get out of the snow, but sure glad I got to see her. Wow, freaking wow. This is the campsite we originally planned to stay. I'm cold. Last night sucked. It was very cold. <laughs> Snow. Sardines. Hey, and this, this is good, right? it is? Yeah, no, we've got. Whoa. This is Kristen. The Kristen. <gasps> <Woo! laughs> mm, the cookies go Whoa. immediately. Cookies. Uh, gingerbread. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Christmas time is so close. Goodbye, White Pass. And hello, cold trail. Almost finished though. I guess it's fall now because there's leaves. Look at that. It is September 17th. Uh, it's been a hard day today. Lots of rain and cold, but uh, we have a wonderful ending today. Big 
lovely wood cabin. Yeah. Guten Tag. Parmesan? Mm -hmm. Grated Parmesan. Because mm. there is no yeast or anything in it. <laughs> just flour and stuff. Nice and sweet. There are so many gifts this experience has given me, and there's still a few I haven't shared with you. One of them is the skill of how to be present. Up to this point on the trail, capturing a moment with a camera, for me, was usually an expression of gratitude. When I was in a moment that I didn't want to forget, which is pretty much the entire trail, I took out my camera. But now I was finding myself stopping at a scenic overlook and not filming it, not even taking a photo. I decided not to have a snapshot of this moment anywhere but my own head. I looked out at the valley, focusing on every detail I could. I noticed the feeling of the wind blowing, the fresh smell of mountain air, and then after a while, I went back to walking. I'd never really done that before. And since that moment, I've done it a lot more. I find myself juggling thoughts in my head more often than I like to admit. Whether that's getting the settings right to capture a beautiful moment in the mountains or consuming a podcast while waiting in line at the grocery store. And there's nothing wrong with either of those things. But oftentimes, a very important thought interrupts everything and says, stop. Take in this moment look at the beautiful miracle that it is. Feel the air against your skin. Look at the colors and patterns around you. Try to take in this moment like something 
you've never experienced and will never get to again. Cherish this moment because you will never have an identical one to it. And doing this leaves me feeling a deep sense of calm and gratitude. It's a gift of patience that I learned here in Washington and I use it daily. Even while editing this video. Breakfast skillet. We've got mountain houses every single night this week. Pop tarts every single morning almost. We got marzipan. What is it? Das ist so eins dieser Lieder und das fährt in die Glieder. Stehen da nicht so Bier. Zieh den Stock aus dem Arsch. Can you do the dance? Yeah, but it's looking weird alone. You know, all together, that looks really cool. <laughs> We're gonna stay here because it's uh, raining tomorrow morning. Isn't this a perfect place to stay overnight? 2400 miles. It still works. Dallas, Texas. Howdy. Yeehaw. In the last chapter, I talked about how stopping to observe a moment more deeply is also a gift of patience. And I'd like to invite you to try that out for yourself. I edited parts of this to be long and frankly kind of boring. That's intentional. It's only boring if you observe it that way. And if you don't want to, that's cool. Maybe skip this chapter, go to the next one. But in my opinion, some of the most beautiful views of the whole PCT or what you're about to see. How many days do we have left? Nine and a half. Nine and a half days left to the border.
first mouse proof system. Yeah, I hope it works. I hope my bag is strong enough. Starting tomorrow, we have six days to Canada. And uh, how many miles do we have? 90.3? Yeah. Are you excited? Yes, I'm very There's a couple more things this trail has given me that I'd like to share with you. The first one is hike your own hike. It's a common phrase in through hiking culture that just means don't judge and don't worry about other people judging you. There's a lot of opinions out there about 
how to do the right kind of through hike. Actually, there's a lot of opinions out there on how you should live your life in general. But in the end, all that matters is that you chose what was right for you, and only you know what that is. Hike your own hike was something we told each other frequently. I'm sure you've heard that comparison is the thief of joy. It's true. When we caught ourselves comparing us to other people, well, hike your own hike. And now during these final weeks of the trail, we were really starting to live it, not even think about it. Which also means we were full-fledged dorks. But who cares? Hike your own hike. A sticky bun. That was only 275 at the bakery. The other thing I learned with new depth was that the relationships in my life mean a lot more to me than I ever thought before. Now, as we are coming to the end of this chapter in our lives, we were both getting more excited to see our friends and family back in Dallas. And neither of us really liked living in Dallas to begin with. I mean, there's no mountains. But we still found ourselves missing it. And it's because of the people who live there. <laughs> so, Probably. it's April 12th, and we're at a goodbye party with our friends. And I guess we could just say cheese. <laughs> <laughs> well, bye! <laughs> we're gonna miss you! Cheese, bye! Bye, guys. <laughs> It's so one and a half days left. I'm excited to get to Canada. Mm. I'm ready to be done. I'm excited. This is our very last 20 mile day. We've got 18 point something tomorrow. And then the next day, a uh, glorious three miles to the monument, to Canada. But yeah, listening to some stuff you should know. We're 22 miles from the border. Okay, this is our last full day. Uh, so far, it's been pretty goofy. I think it's going to be a goofy day. And it's going to be a great day because it's sunny. It's a great last day. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Today is the last day we are spending on the PCT. So let's do that. 3.6. Oh! excited. Right there. That's the border. Good luck on your adventures. You're going to start with Toto down. Monday, and you're still helping all of us out there. Super crazy. Well, I didn't initially, but I'm a car. It's the Mexico border. It's pretty crazy.
Right there. That's the border. And now we're going to it. Been waiting for this moment for about five months, five and a half, something like that. And we're almost there. It's so strange watching how excited we were to be finished with this season of life that now I look back on so fondly. This five and a half month journey would change my life more than I could have ever anticipated. I've grown conflicted at times with staying in Dallas versus moving to the mountains or pursuing a nomadic lifestyle. Anytime I take a deep breath of crisp morning air, I'm instantly transported back to this time in my life, and I miss it. But at the same time, back then, I really missed being home, and so did Kristen. The funny thing is, our journey here back in Dallas has forced us to grow in ways that I don't think we would have were we to pursue something else. Today, when someone tells me they want to do a through hike or some other journey, I always encourage them. And if they're nervous about it, I encourage them more. The best journeys in life are the ones we're least sure of the outcome. But be ready for that outcome to end up right back where you started. Because that's what happened to us. And I'm thankful for that. Thank you. 